as late as, as late as probably 76, but certainly as late as 1970, uh, cities were, were rare in Africa. It was an overwhelmingly rural, at least sub-Saharan Africa was overwhelmingly rural, right? Oh, absolutely. And the cities were small. They were sort of post-colonial cities that had been designed by uh, colonial administrators for colonial administrators. Um, they'd grown a bit, but uh, you, know, you, you wouldn't find many cities above half a million at that time. Um, and, uh, and no one thought it was a particularly good idea for millions of people to come in from the countryside to the cities at, at oh, that time. Oh, not at all. It was the old mantra was rural development, and um, uh, so so cities were a neglected topic, really. And forty years later, they're still far too neglected. But Africa is no longer a rural continent. It is a continent that has, has vast numbers of urbanites. It's still not majority urban, but it's still it's much more urban than it was. People you know. have moved much more than ideas have moved. Yes, I'm the sure people that's right. have moved to cities. The ideas have moved much less far. And so we have this terrible mismatch, right, between the state of knowledge, which is so still focused on rural development, and the state of need, which is so focused on cities. And it's doubly tragic because as these cities have got big without any thought, um, it's going to be really quite hard to retrofit them into, into efficient cities. A city done right is a platform for opportunity. A city done wrong uh, becomes a, a bit of a nightmare. Um, it's uh, congested, so it's not very productive. People are crammed together without decent water and sewage, and so it's a health hazard. And it's important to, to remember that this is not just about eliminating traffic congestion, right? If the cities of Africa aren't healthy and functional, they can't be engines of growth for the entire continent, right? It's hard to imagine a pathway out of poverty to prosperity that doesn't run through cities. The big good news for Africa is that most of its urbanization is still to come. Um, between now and 2050, Africa's urban population is going to triple. Uh, and, uh, and that's a huge opportunity. It means two-thirds of the cities not yet built. Um, so at least get that two-thirds right. Um, the danger is there will be so much attention to trying to improve the existing third that that will devour all the resources. Instead of focusing on the new? Yes. Two weeks ago I was in Kigali, which fortunately is a city that's still small, 1.3 million, and it's still decent. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not got a penumbra of squatting and so on. Um, but it's growing at 8% a year. So uh, the next 12 months, another 100,000 people will arrive mm -hmm. in Kigali. Where on earth are they going to live? Yeah. They've got to settle somewhere. And we know what the default option is. Um, the default They're option is they've got to squat. Yeah. And if they squat, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Then you can't do anything. The cost of retrofitting is so high. So um, what can you do? Well, the temptation of government is to say, oh, we will build housing for 100,000 people, public housing. They're poor. We will build 100,000 housing. You know? uh, and the trouble is that is totally unaffordable for these governments and organisationally way beyond the possible. So what's the more realistic uh, approach? And, uh, and I think it's, uh, it looks, it's called sites and services, or you can do a little bit beyond that. But sites and services just means you're going to lay out plots, um, clear size, um, small enough so that you're going to have some density, because density is your friend in cities. Mm -hmm. Um, we're not going to build many more Los Angeles in Africa, I hope, because the, the infrastructure cost is so enormous if people are so dispersed. So density, small plots, laid out with a road grid. Underneath that road grid, the essential services that otherwise cost so much to put in. So water, sewage, electricity. That's the sort of basic grid. Um, and doing that, you know, for Kigali to do that... Um, Let's see, we've got um, uh, 100,000 people in the next 12 months. That's probably around 25,000 housing units. So you're creating 25,000 plots 
Hmm? Every month, a couple of thousand plots. Mm -hmm. um, that's quite a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, if you can do that and do more, there's plenty more we can suggest. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do that, you're building next year's nightmare.